my concerns about Aaron. I didn't know what was going to happen to him, but he's, he's turned it out just, just fine. Amen. Turned out just fine. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And for we are the hearers of our faith, the doers on today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works. And uh, just for a few moments on this afternoon, I just want to preach from uh, the subject, he's working on me. He's, he's working on me. It's uh, one, of, one of my, I think this is probably one of my uh, favorite Bible verses. And, uh, one that uh, I run to in times of great difficulty. Whenever I come up upon difficult times, this is one of those verses. You know, you should have some verses that you... Uh, keep in your back pocket, so to speak, uh, that you know that you read and you know that you get encouragement from when you're uh, in the midst of a dark place. And for me, this is one of those verses that I keep uh, on standby, if you will, one of those verses that I cling to uh, when uh, I come upon difficult times. I need to be reminded every now and then that, uh, that God is still working on me need to be reminded uh, in the midst of, of the hot fire, in the midst of the heat of the furnace, uh, when we don't understand uh, what's going on in our lives, when uh, we look around and uh, even perhaps sometimes the man of God cannot offer an explanation as to why we are encountering the things that we are encountering. Uh, every now and then you need to be reminded that God is working on us. Puts things into perspective. As I was talking to someone on the other day about uh, the fact that even when we go through, sometimes we lose sight of the fact that God is still in control. Uh, we uh, get so embroiled and so caught up in our dilemma, in our uh, trial and our tests and we lose sight of the fact that God is still in control and that never there is never a time when God ceases from being God there's never a time when God ceases from being in control uh, he is in control and he is uh, controlling the course he is uh, pulling the strings when things are going well we give God the praise and the glory when things go well in our lives, but uh, giving praise to God being in control. Uh, but we need to have that same attitude when we are in the fire, uh, remembering that I'm in here, and even though I'm in here, God is still in charge. Even when it looks like the devil is running roughshod in our lives, God is still in charge. Even when it looks like the enemy is having his way with us, God is still in charge. We don't remember that as much as we should. And, and I think that if we did, uh, we would give God a praise even in the midst of our furnace. We would give God a praise even when we are on the verge of losing our minds. It should be a reassuring to us that God is in control and there's nothing that can happen to me unless God signs off on it. Amen. Every now and then I need to be reminded that, uh, that God is still working on us. We need to be reminded of that because we uh, will find ourselves in times where we want to quit, we want to give up, and, and the devil in life, and, and really if we told the whole truth, of the matter there is there are many times when uh, we have had the feeling that I, I just want to get I just can't take it anymore amen if we were honest on today all of us could agree that there have been times when we wanted to throw in the towel there have been times when we didn't think
that it was worth it. Uh, and, and, and truthfully, if we all were honest with God and, and all were honest with ourselves, we've had times in our saved lives where we question our faith, question whether uh, God's word was true, question whether, uh, I know I'm not, I can't be the only one that's ever questioned, amen, whether God's word was true, question whether uh, God was God, question whether or not uh, there was anything to this whole salvation experience. Uh, if all of us have been honest with ourselves, we've all been tempted to go back, tempted to uh, just say away with this life and I'm going to go and do whatever it is I want to do. If any of, us, any of us are truthful today, we can all testify that we've had days where we just wanted to quit. Now, can I get a witness in this house? Amen. You, you may be super sane on today. You never had a time where you wanted to go back. But, uh, but for me, amen, there have been days where I wanted to quit. There have been days where the fire got too hot and, and uh, the devil, amen, perpetrated his attacks with, uh, with such a level of dark proficiency that it caused me to say, well, maybe I'll just give up and go and do whatever it is I want to do. Amen. Maybe it was uh, some discipline under the hand of God that we've come under that caused us to say, I don't have to take this. I don't have to go through this. I don't have to be here. Amen. It is in those times where we really realize what faith in God is all about. Amen. Because I come to tell you, you don't really know what faith is until you've been tempted to give it up. Amen. Can I get a witness in here? Until you have almost lost it. Until it has been all that you can hold on to. Amen. Until it has been, amen, everything to you. You don't really know what faith is. Amen. But I come to tell somebody today, it is in those times where God is working on us, working on our minds, working on our hearts, working on our spirits, working on our desires, working on our motives, working on our intentions. Amen. And I don't know about you today, but, but I am grateful unto God that he would take the time to work on me. Amen. You ought to be glad this afternoon. Amen. That uh, the, the creator of the universe, the one who upholds all things by the word of his power, the one who looked out, thank God, on the morning of nothing and created something out of nothing, the God who sits high would take out time Amen. To work on you. And he would take out time to work on me. The fact that you are here on this afternoon listening to the word of God. Perhaps it may not jive with your spirit. Maybe it is not resting with you in a manner in which it makes you comfortable. I come to tell you that is God taking out the time to work on you. Taking out the time to talk to you taking out the time to minister to you. Can I get a witness in this church today? You ought to be glad. Amen. You ought to be glad that, that God takes time to talk to us. When he is not talking to everybody else. When he is not talking. Amen. You can even look in your own lives and, and look in your own family and see that God is not dealing with other family members the way that he is dealing with you. The other you look around and, and they are not here today, but you are here. That is a sign that God is pulling, thank God, on the strings of your heart because he loves you and he wants to see you say, why don't you clap your hands and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you another time. Amen. Why don't you tell somebody he loves you and he wants to see you say, that's the reason why you are here on today. Amen. That's the reason why. 
amen, those times when you wanted to quit, those times when you wanted to walk away, those times when you tried to walk away. He didn't let you, amen, just leave here. He didn't let you just turn your back on here. He didn't let you just leave the church, amen. He kept you because he is working on you because he wants you to be saved. Clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Tell him thank you another time. Amen. Those of us, amen, can testify that, amen, that God could have left me in that hell hole that he found me in. Amen. I wish I had somebody in here that had a testimony that God has delivered me from something. And not only has he delivered me from something, but he has delivered me from somewhere. Amen. Dasha, I know you got a testimony that he could have left you in that hell hell hole that you were in but thanks be to God he loved you enough to reach way down and pull you out of the mud you want to give God glory you want to open up your mouth and tell him thank you tell him thank you another time I don't understand hey man please be seated hey man give me about five more minutes I I don't understand hey man why it is when when God is so evidently working on an individual wow how it is they can just turn their back on God hey man my mother was telling me about a young woman hey man in the church that we grew up with thank God that hey man was saved and then back Slid. Amen. She, she was saved and, and then left the church. Amen. I come to tell you if you were saved and then left and now you're back. Amen. You ought to be glad unto God that he allowed you to get back. Amen. If you were saved and you left. Amen. At some point or another you ought to be glad that God blessed you. Thank God to get back to him because some don't make it back. Amen. Clap your hand and shout glory. Shout glory another time. Amen. Young woman was saved. Thank God. And then she backslid. Amen. She left. Thank God. Turned her back on God. Amen. Amen. As the story goes, thank God she uh, had a baby out in the world and, and came to the place where in, uh, she had almost died. As a matter of fact, she had died. Amen. Laying on the hospital bed. Thank God had died on life support. Couldn't breathe on her own. And God sent the prophet into the hospital room. Laid hands on her. And God raised her. Thank God from the dead. Uh, to where the doctors were wondering what in the world is going on. Uh, God put his hand on that young woman and raised her from the dead. Uh, the devil tried to take her life. But God raised her from the dead. Why did he do that? Because he wanted her to be saved. And I come to tell you, amen, a week, about a week went by. Amen, I'm not. And after God had raised her from the dead, amen, she wasn't thankful for what God had done to her. Amen, I come to tell you, you ought to be glad that God, amen, didn't leave you. Thank God, in the out to dry. He didn't leave you for the devil to take your life. And if you are here, you ought to be thankful Lord, to God that he did not allow you to die out in the world. Amen. Because this young woman, she was not thankful unto God. Amen. And about a week later, she got in a bad car accident. Amen. You would think uh, she would say within herself, Amen. God raised me from the dead. I'm running back to him as fast as I can get there. But she didn't do that. Uh, she turned her back on God. Uh, amen. And you only get so many times uh, until God stops working with you. Uh, got into a car accident. Uh, amen. And is on life support today. Uh, let that be a reminder to us. Uh, amen. That when God takes up the time to work on you, uh, you need to respond. Uh, thank God accordingly. Uh, can the church shout hallelujah? When God takes out the time, thank God to talk to you. When God takes out the time, thank God to minister to you. He's trying to help you. Thank 
got to be saved. He didn't want to see you lost. He didn't want to see you die and go to a devil's hell. He's trying to work on you because he wants to see you saved. Clap your hand and shout glory. Shout glory another time. I told you to tell somebody earlier, but tell them again. Tell them God loves you and he wants to see you saved. Oh yes, he doesn't want to see you. Thank God used up by man. He doesn't want to see you run through by men. He wants to see you saved because he loves you. Oh yes, he does. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting to love before your mama loved you God loved you before your father loved you God loved you before that man told you I love you God loved you before that woman told you I love you God loved you he loved you so much until he talked to you this morning and said go to that church until he talked to somebody uh, and said call her uh, and tell her come to church uh, he loved you so much uh, until today uh, you find yourself uh, sitting in the pew uh, listening to the preacher tell you uh, with words out of heaven uh, I know how you are right now uh, but I love you uh, not based on who you are right now uh, but I love based on who I determine that you will become I got plans for you I got plans for you tell him neighbor God's got plans for you you can't die he's got plans for you that's why that's why sometimes it seems that the pastor is hard on us it's not to being hard God's just working with you he doesn't want to see you go back he doesn't want to see you fail if I got to cry let me cry if I got to shed some tear let me shed the tear if I got to hurt let me hurt just as long as he's working on me just as long have your hand and tell God thank you he's working on me he's working on my mind he's working on my heart working on my spirit taking out hate and putting in love taking out fear I used to be afraid looking over my shoulder but God is working on me taking out fear and putting in courage working on me I used to be a man pleaser I used to run around trying to please whatever man I could find but God is working on you to let you know that he's the only one that is worthy of your attention can I get a witness in here used to run around trying to seek the approval of every man every woman you could find but God told me to tell you today he's the only one worthy of your attention he's the only one you should cling to he's the only one can I get a witness in here because I stopped by to tell you man will let you down are you mad right man will turn his back on you man will beat you up use you and abuse you then throw you away for the next person to beat you up some more use you and abuse you then throw you away again for the next person to beat you up some more until you get to the point to where you want to take your own life because nobody loves me nobody cares about me nobody wants me nobody wants me no 
nobody wants to love me. I'm unlovable. Look at me. I've been beaten. I've been torn. I've been torn to shreds. Thank God by life. My mama don't want me. My brother don't want me. My sister don't want me. I don't nobody want me. I may as well kill myself. I come by the day number one to bind that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you, Satan. To try to tell somebody don't nobody love them. I bind that demon in the name of Jesus. God told me to tell you I love you. I want you. And I'm working on you. Have your head and show glory. Shout glory another time. Let me get to my text. Well, the Bible tell me in this second chapter of the book of Ephesians, Paul writing to the church. Thank God in Ephesus. Letting them know in verse number one, in you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins and you has he made alive you were dead but God have quickened your mortal body I was dead when were you dead preacher when I was alive without God doing my own thing going where I wanted to go doing what I wanted to do I was there but thanks be to God he didn't let me stay there but the Bible tell me and you have he quickened who were there I wish I had somebody that know you were there but now you're alive I wish I had a witness that knows I was dead but God raised me up he raised me up how did he raise you when I was buried in the waters of baptism and I spoke in tongues and God saved me how did he raise you when he turned me around I used to be a dope addict but now I'm a deacon I used to be a prostitute but now I'm a preacher how did he raise you when he turned me around turned me from depression to encouragement turned me around turned me from fear turned me to courage when he turned me around turned me from doubt turned me to faith clap your hand and say yeah see ya see ya it's another time how did he turn you he turned my life thank God all around and the Bible tells me that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus he is working on us he's working on us clap your hand and tell God thank you tell him thank you another time He's working on us. He's working on us. The fact that you are here means that God is working on you. It may not feel good in the process. But the fact that you are here, the fact that you are yet alive, the fact that you are in the church today means that God is trying to work on you. You know you're not a finished product yet. You know you are not what you should be. 
You're not what you ought to be. But we all be able to thank God that we are not what we used to be. Ah. You ought to tell somebody, I thank you. I'm not where I want to be, but I thank him. I'm not what I used to be. I'm better now. I'm stronger now. I'm I'm not that drug addict I used to be. I'm not that whoremonger I used to be. I'm not that crackhead I used to be. We are the sons of God. I am not what I want to be, but I thank him. He's worked on me. He's working on my mind, working on my heart, working on my soul. construction I'm under construction he's spinning me on his wheel he's spinning me on his wheel was marred in the hands of the clot and of the potter. He didn't like what he saw the first time. So he made me again a new vessel. That's why I don't mind when I have to be corrected. That's why I don't mind when I have to be chastened by God. Because he chastens who he loves. And he that despises chastening, the Bible says, is a bastard. But I thank God that he's taken out the time, even right now, to work on me. You ought to be glad today that he loves you enough to talk to you. (coughs) That he loves you enough to minister to you. Don't turn your back on God today. Hallelujah. Don't turn your back on God today. Not when he's not when he's trying to work on you. Not when he's trying to help you. He doesn't want to see you lost. He loves you so much, he doesn't want to see you lost. That young lady, tragic, terrible, tragic. The tragedy is underscored by the fact that God was trying to help her raised her from the dead gave her a new opportunity at life and she turned her back on God one week later after having given birth to a new child riding in the, car, in the passenger seat of the car on a street in the city of Jackson that is not busy at all on a side street ran into a telephone pole, split the pole, car laid on the driver's side. She's on life support, on her way out. Who knows if God is going to give her a second chance? Who knows? But that should be a lesson to us that have had second chances. Because I know there's some second chance folk in the house. And not 
not just a second chance, but some of us got a third chance. Some of us got a fourth chance. Some of us got a fifth chance. You ought to be glad today that he loves you enough to give you another chance. I know she messed up.